Do you feel like you're always overthinking everything, constantly ruminating on the past or the what ifs of the future and overanalyzing every single decision? But what if I told you that your awareness of your overthinking actually means that you're ahead of the game? What if our awareness of our overthinking, that same awareness that let's say made you search on YouTube for a solution to overthinking was in fact the solution? Let's unpack it. Hello, my name is Jack, and after my undergraduate degree in psychology, I went to do a master's in psychodynamic psychotherapy, and I've spent the last decade trying to understand the human experience. And on this channel, I like to try and share my insights and help you understand yourself a little bit better. Thinking back on it now, one of the things that compelled me into a career in psychology and counseling was to try and understand myself and to heal myself and to help myself out of my own anxiety and my own overthinking. And spoiler alert, it didn't really work. One of the things that I have slowly started to realize that it's actually the awareness of the overthinking or of the anxiety that is the solution because it represents a level of consciousness that not everybody has. Let's contrast uh, someone who's aware of their overthinking to someone who's not aware of their overthinking, but yet they are still overthinking and they're going about their day very quick to anger, very quick to frustration, their mind full of chatter and mental noise, and they're completely oblivious of it. And now let's compare that to someone who is aware that they're overthinking. It might not necessarily stop their overthinking, but they do know they're doing it. That is the part that we need to cultivate. That part of us that can observe ourselves, that can see the things that we're doing, see the things that aren't particularly helpful. I like to call it the watcher. And if we can identify more and more as this watcher, that seems to be the path to liberation from the endless overthinking. Think your way out of overthinking. That seems to be the advice that the internet mostly gives you. And don't get me wrong, there is some utility to these practical steps and these useful tools that you can implement to stop your anxieties and overthinking, but those don't really seem to get to the heart of the matter. At least that's not been my experience. Trying to think your way out of thinking seems to be like throwing fire onto more fire. That's just hot and f just fire. Now you may be sitting there thinking, Jack, I am aware of my overthinking but it doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't seem to help me stop overthinking. And to that, I would say I understand fully. The watcher, the observer is this very fleeting identity. There's a lot of resistance to being this neutral observer because it's something similar to an ego death because the neutral observer, the watcher, doesn't feel anything. It doesn't feel any pain. It doesn't feel any joy. It's just there, kind of the blank canvas that all of these things get painted on. So it's not necessarily something that we want to be all the time, but maybe a good way to think about it is integrating it into the whole, integrating it a little bit more so that when we do feel overwhelmed with the negative emotions and the negative thoughts, it's more accessible to just move back a little bit and just watch everything so that the negative emotion loses its weight. So how do we do this? How do we connect more with this watcher in us that's seeing everything? Pausing and acknowledging. The power of awareness, the power of acknowledging is transformational. And the more that we can turn the mirror inward, so to speak, the more that it can lead to a profound change. Slow down. The world is fast paced. If you're an overthinker, your thoughts are even faster. Sometimes we actually need to intentionally slow down. A practical tip is to go for a walk and a true walk, not walking somewhere. A true walk is when you're just going for a walk and look at the trees and look at the squirrels and just look at them without trying to figure anything out. Meditation is also a great tool to connect with the watcher. I made a video on meditation and specifically its utility in overthinking and you can watch that here, just let it be. This is a really profoundly difficult, especially if you're an overthinker and you do not do well with uncertainty, which many of us overthinkers do not. Allowing things to just be without necessarily having a resolve straight away or without putting qualifiers on like this is good or this is bad, just let things be as they are. Shift your attention to the present moment. The watcher is very much 
in the present moment. It lives intensely in the present moment. So the more that we can be in the present moment, the more that we can connect with this watcher that is inside of us. There are many different techniques that you can do to connect with the present moment, but a lot of them involve activating your senses. So notice things that are only read or trying to hear as many sounds as you can hear or trying to feel the ground beneath your feet or the chair beneath your bonds. All of these things bring us into the present moment and out of thought and bridge that gap between our neurotic ego mind and this neutral observer, this watcher. Practice, practice, practice. It takes patience and commitment. We actually have to stand back and not do anything. I will leave you with one of my favorite quotes, which I think really poetically, succinctly sums up what I'm trying to say. But before that, let me just quickly say that this video is part of my seven day YouTube challenge in which I'm trying to make a new video every day for seven days to try and get over my own overthinking specifically around YouTube videos. You can check out my other videos and please do like and subscribe to help support this challenge and support the channel. Fortune's door doesn't open inwards so that one can push it open by rushing at it, but it opens outwards and therefore one can do nothing about it. So this idea that in order to get through the door into something like happiness or something like peace, we actually have to stand back and let it open. The more we push, the more we shove, the more we try to grasp to things, the more we try to think our way out of our pain, the harder it seems to be. So the practice, I suppose, is to just stand back and watch. And I'm starting to think some things I'm just not supposed to know So I'll let it go